Hello everyone, it's me, Sanjay Vasu, back again for another video. This time I'm doing it on Cambridge Primary Checkpoint for Science Paper 2, October 2023. I'll be continuing this paper for part 2, where I will cover questions 6 to 11. Let's start. Question 6. Carlos and Mike investigate the rate of evaporation in four different samples of salt solution. Each solution contains 100 centimeter cubes of water, but different masses of salt. Carlos and Mike follow these steps to do the experiment. Look at the results table. The salt in salt solution, beaker and salt solution at start, and beaker and salt solution after 8 hours have their masses written, and the change in mass is also written in the table. And in this case, there are 4 different masses of salt in 4 different salt solutions. A. Calculate the change in mass for 5 grams of salt in salt solution. Write your answer in the table. So in this case, the change in mass is simply going to be 125 minus 65, which is 60 grams. That's the answer. Part B. Carlos and Mike decide to test one more salt solution. The solution contains 25 grams of salt in 100 centimeter cubes of water. Predict the change in mass in this experiment. Alright, so we can see that 5, 10, 15, and 20 grams of salt in salt solution are given. And the change in mass is progressively decreasing. 60, 50, 45, 40. So you can expect if... It increases again for the mass of salt in salt solution then the change in mass is going to decrease to 35 or so because the trend is minus 5 minus 5 and the third time it could go minus 5 as well to 35 part c describe one possible safety risk in the investigation how to reduce this risk all right so we can see in the steps to conduct the experiment that we're using an oven and with a temperature of 70 degrees Celsius. 70 degrees is enough to burn the skin. And of course, you would not want the salt solution to burn our skin somehow. Or if we touch the glass beaker, it could obviously cause an impulse to our skin. Therefore, that could be our safety risk. So the beaker with salt solution could become extremely hot. And how to reduce the risk, of course, is simply wear gloves and a lab coat as well. Since if the salt solution somehow splashes due to the heat and it could come out of the beaker and hit the skin. That's the answer. Part D, tick the box that shows the independent variable in this investigation. The independent variable is the one that we, as humans, are changing in the investigation. And in this case, Carlos and Mike have changed the mass of salt in the salt solution. The change in mass is dependent variable. That's what we are measuring. That's dependent variable. And the temperature of the oven and the time in the oven are all constant variable since we're not changing them at all. Independent variable is what we change. That's our answer. Let's go to part E. Tick the box to show a variable that is controlled to make the investigation fair. As I said, the mass of salt is the independent variable and the change in mass is a dependent variable. So these two are not going to be the option which is controlled. Now the mass of beaker and salt solution at the start and after 8 hours are also not controlled since this depends on the mass of salt and salt solution. And this is always changing, so these two are also always changing. The temperature of the oven. This one is always 70 degrees Celsius. So this is the variable that's controlled. That's the answer. Question seven. Lily investigates floating and sinking. She drops coins into a boat made of tin metal foil. A, the boat floats when there are 10 coins in the boat. Complete the sentence. The boat sinks when there are 16 coins in the boat because dash. So we can see if we add more coins because 16 is greater than 10. So we are adding six more coins. That means the mass increases inside the boat. Therefore, the boat obviously sinks. So the boat sinks when there are 16 coins in the boat because the mass inside the boat increases. That's it. That's the answer. B. Lily wants to make the boat sink when there are only 10 coins in the boat. 
So just what she does to the boat to make it sink with only 10 coins. Well, she could make the boat smaller. And I'll explain that in a second. So you have a smaller boat of about this size and you put 10 coins inside that. The force exerted will be the same even if you have the larger or the smaller boat because there's still 10 coins in both boats, the same amount of mass. But then the area over which this force acts is smaller. So that means if the area is decreasing, that means the pressure on the water will increase because pressure equals force by area. Therefore, making the boat smaller could make it sink with only 10 coins. That's our answer. Let's go to question 8. The diagram shows a section through the soil of a grassland and a desert. So they have humus and minerals, clay and sand, small rocks and stones. A. Why there is similarity between the grassland soil and desert soil? As I just said, both of them have humus and minerals, clay and sand, small rocks and stones. So we can write they have the same components. This is the simplest one. That'll be our answer. B. Suggest why plants found in the grassland soil do not grow in desert soil. We can see a grassland soil has large amounts of humus and minerals, or humus and minerals, however you want to call it, compared to the desert soil. Therefore, if you put a grassland plant into the desert, obviously it's not going to have enough of humus and minerals in order to grow. It's more accustomed to having large amounts. But then now that it has smaller amounts, yes, it's going to die. The plants found the grassland soil don't grow in the desert soil because Grassland plants cannot get the required amount of humus and minerals in desert soil. Note that the small stones and rocks do not actually help the plant in their growth. It's only the humus and minerals that actually aid the plant. So that'll be our answer. Let's go to the question nine. Dengue fever is a disease caused by infection with a virus. The chart shows the number of people with dengue fever in a country. Which year had the highest number of people with dengue fever? That's part A. We can see that the bar is tallest for 2008. And if the bar is taller, that means it has the most number of people with dengue fever, which is the y-axis. So the answer is 2008. B, how many people had dengue fever in 1996? So 1996 bar is here and it goes all the way up to 20,000. So that'll be our number. C, the disease is transmitted when people are bitten by insects. Circle a name that describes an insect that transmits disease. This is actually called a vector because this insect is essentially a transmitter of certain diseases like dengue or malaria. D. Describe one way to avoid being bitten by insects. So the most obvious one is simply to spray insecticides around our house. It's the easiest way to avoid insect bites. Of course, there are other ways, but this one is the best and easiest one. For example, you could cover up all your exposed parts of your body, or you could use something called mosquito nets or insect nets, which are essentially nets which cover up your windows so that insects cannot get in to the house, but still allow visibility outside the house. So there'll be a few of our answers. Let's go to question 10. You use a toy car to make a model uses the model to explain the property of a ray of light. A. Describe two things that happen to the car as it travels from smooth surface to the rough surface. So the first thing we can clearly see using the arrow direction is that the car changes direction. And 
And the second thing we can see is not the most obvious thing from first sight, but if we see that there is a smooth surface and a rough surface and the car moves from smooth to rough, of course the car is going to slow down. That'll be our answer. B. Circle the property of a light ray that is shown by this model. We can see that the light, or in this case the toy car which is modeling it, changes direction when moving from two different surfaces. So this is similar to refraction because light rays change direction and become slower when they move from a rarer medium to a denser medium. C. The smooth surface in the model represents air. Air is a medium that a light ray passes through. Write the name of another medium that light ray passes through. Of course, we can write transparent liquids. Because if the liquid is opaque, although there's not many which are opaque, but if it is, that means, of course, we'll not be able to see through it and a light ray won't pass through it. Well, of course, you can write specific names like water or glass. But of course, these should not be gases because air is already given as a medium. They have said to write another medium, not the same one once again. So well, that'll be our answer. And now we can go to question 11. The moon changes in appearance over its monthly cycle. A. The diagram shows seven different phases of the moon in the northern hemisphere. There are eight phases of the moon, but only seven are drawn in the diagram. Explain why it's not possible to draw the other phase. Well, we can see that all of these phases have part of the moon which are present. But the eighth phase, which is actually the new moon, is just a blank space, right? It's just blank darkness because you're not able to see the moon at that time. So why it's not possible to draw the other phase? The moon cannot be seen during its new moon phase. That's the answer. B. The diagram shows a waxing crescent of the moon in northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere. Look at the diagrams. Complete the sentences. One similarity between the waxing crescents in the diagram is dash. Well, we can see that these two waxing crescents have the same shape. They're just oriented differently. It's basically a mirror image of each other like this. So they have the same shape. Now one difference between the waxing crescents and the diagram is, well, we can see clearly that, as I said, the orientation of the moon is different. Or in other words, the diagrams are shown at different angles. Of course, there is a few others. For example, the moon in the southern hemisphere is actually a bit brighter than northern hemisphere according to the diagram. So that could also be written in our answer for the difference. Well, for the similarity, it's only the same shape, or also we could write size over here. Because we can see that the moons are the same size. That'll be our answer. And with that, I come to the end of the paper. Please like this video, subscribe to our channel, share this video with your friends and family, and comment on how you think this video was. With that, it's me, Sanjay Vasu, signing out. Thank you. Bye.